Desmond, Paul Henry was a Manchester University lecturer and reader in philosophy. He was one of the first British artists to experiment with machine-generated visual effects at the time of the emerging global computer art movement of the 1960s. During this period, Henry constructed a succession of three drawing machines from modified bombsite analog computers which were employed in World War II bombers to calculate the accurate release of bombs onto their targets. Henry's machine-generated effects resemble complex versions of the abstract, curvilinear graphics which accompany Microsoft's Windows Media Player. Henry's machine-generated effects may therefore also be said to represent early examples of computer graphics, the making of line drawings with the aid of computers and drawing machines. During the 1970s Henry focused on further developing his own unique photochemical techniques for the production of original visual effects. He went on to make a fourth and a fifth drawing machine in 1984 and 2002 respectively. These later machines, however, were based on a mechanical pendulum design and not bombsite computers. Henry's artistic career, it was thanks to artist L. S. Lowry, working in collaboration with the then director of Sulphur Dark Gallery, Frape, that Henry's artistic career was launched in 1961 when he won a local competition at Sulphur Dark Gallery, entitled London Opportunity. The prize for winning this competition was a one-man exhibition show in London at the Reed Gallery. Lowry knew how crucial such a London show could be in bringing an artist to public attention. As one of the competition judges, Lowry visited Henry's home in Burford Drive, Manchester, to view his range of artistic work. It was at this London show of 1962, entitled Ideographs, that Henry's machine-generated effects were exhibited for the first time, along with pictures based upon Henry's photochemical techniques which had originally won him the competition prize. It was this first exhibition of machine-produced effects which led to Henry and his first drawing machine being included in the first-ever programme, in the BBC's North at Six series and to his being approached by the American magazine Life. Henry and his first drawing machine were to be featured in this magazine, but the article was scrapped following the assassination of U.S. President John F. Kennedy. The generally positive response his pictures received reflects the zeitgeist of technological optimism of the 1960s. The Guardian of the 17th of September 62 described the images produced by this first machine as being quite out of this world and almost impossible to produce by human hands. Henry's machine-generated effects went on to be exhibited at various venues during the 1960s the most major being cybernetic serendipity held at the Institute of Contemporary Arts in London. This represented one of the most significant art and technology exhibitions of the decade. In this exhibition not only the effects but also the drawing machine itself was included as an interactive exhibit. Cybernetic serendipity then went on to tour the United States where exhibition venues included the Corcoran Gallery in Washington and San Francisco's Palace of Fine Arts. This second machine returned from its tour of the United States in 1972 in a complete state of disrepair. Such technical failures were not unusual in electric and motor-driven exhibition items. More recently, frequent mechanical and or electronic computer breakdowns contributed to the decision to close artworks. In March 2003, after only three years in operation as a permanent, technology-based, interactive exhibition, Henry's inspiration, the bombsite computer. The main component of each Henry drawing machine was the bombsite computer. These mechanical analog computers represented some of the most important technological advancements of World War II. However, by the 1960s they already represented old technology when compared to the more modern digital computers then available. The mechanical analog bombsite computer was employed in World War II bomber aircraft to determine the exact moment bombs were to be released to hit their target. 
the Bombardier entered information on air and wind speed, wind direction, altitude, angle of drift and bomb weight into the computer which then calculated the bomb release point, using a complex arrangement of gyros, motors, gears and a telescope. It was in the early 1950s that Henry purchased his very first Sperry bombsite computer, in mint condition, from an army surplus warehouse in Shudhill, Manchester. This purchase was inspired by Henri's lifelong passion for all things mechanical, which had been further fueled by seven years serving as a technical clerk with the Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers during World War II. Henry so marveled at the mechanical inner workings of this bombsite computer in motion, that he eventually decided to capture its peerless parabolas on paper. He then modified the bombsite to create the first drawing machine of 1960. A second was constructed in 1963 and a third in 1967. These machines created complex, abstract, asymmetrical, curvilinear, repetitive line drawings which were either left untouched as completed drawings or embellished by the artist's hand in response to the suggestive, machine-generated effects. None of Henry's machines now remains in operational order, the drawing machines. Each Henry drawing machine was based around an analog bombsite computer or in combination with other components which Henry happened to have acquired, for his home-based workshop in Worley Range, Manchester. Each machine took up to six weeks to construct and each drawing from between two hours to two days to complete. The drawing machines relied upon an external electric power source to operate either one or two servo motors which powered the synchronization of suspended drawing implement acting upon either a stationary or moving drawing table. With the first drawing machine Henry employed Byros as the mark-making implement, however with the machines that followed he preferred to use Indian ink and technical tube pens. Since these effects, in contrast to biro ink, do not risk fading upon prolonged exposure to sunlight, how the drawing machines operated. Henry's drawing machines were quite unlike the conventional computers of the 1960s since they could not be pre-programmed nor store information. His machines relied instead, as did those of artist John Tingley, upon a mechanics of chance. That is to say, they relied upon the chance relationship in the arrangement of each machine's mechanical components, the slightest alteration to which could dramatically impinge on the final result. In the words of Henry, he let each machine do its own thing, in accordance with its sui generis mechanical features, with often surprising and unpredictable results. The imprecise way Henry's machines were both constructed and operated ensured that their effects could not be mass-produced and would be infinitely varied. Such imprecise tools as Henry's machines have been judged by some to enhance artistic creativity as opposed to modern computer imaging software which leaves no scope for artistic intuition. Nor could Henry's machines have been accused of preventing the artist from exercising aesthetic choice. They were truly interactive, like modern computer graphic manipulation software, with a Henry drawing machine. The artist had general overall control and was free to exercise personal and artistic intuition at any given moment of his choosing during the drawing production process. Both these elements of chance and interaction were in contrast to most other computer artists or graphic designers of the period for whom the first stage in producing a digital computer graphic was to conceive the end product. The next stage was one where mathematical formulae or geometric pattern manipulations found to represent the desired lines. These were then programmed into a computer language, punched onto cards, and read into the computer. Henry's machine-generated effects in 2001, Henry's machine-generated work was discussed in terms of the use made, since earliest times, of a range of tools for producing similar abstract visual effects. Once Henry himself had beheld the visual effects produced by his first machine, he then strove to find possible precursors such as the organic forms described in natural form mathematics. 
Henry also compared his machine-generated effects to those produced using earlier scientific and mathematical instruments such as Swadi's geometric pen of 1750, pendulum harmonographs and the geometric lathers used in ornamental and banknote engraving. His inclusion in 1968 in cybernetic serendipity enabled him to further contrast his machine-generated effects with similar though less complex and varied ones produced using a variety of tools. These included effects displayed on a visual display screen using a cathode ray oscilloscope and those produced using a mechanical plotter linked to either a digital or analog computer. However Henry's drawing machines, in contrast to other precision mark-making instruments like the lathe and mechanical plotter, relied heavily upon the element of chance both in the construction and function. Henry in Fractal Mathematics Henry's introduction in 2001 to the aesthetic application of fractal mathematics provided Henry with the necessary terms of reference for describing the chance-based operational aspects of his machines. Fractal mathematics could also help describe the aesthetic appreciation of his machine-generated effects or mechanical fractals, as he came to term them. Fractal systems are produced by a dynamic, non-linear system of interdependent and interacting elements, in Henry's case. This is represented by the mechanisms and motions of the drawing machine itself. In a fractal system, as in each Henry drawing machine, very small changes or adjustments to initial influences can have far-reaching effects. Fractal images appeal to our intuitive aesthetic appreciation of order and chaos combined. Each Henry machine produced drawing bears all the hallmarks of a fractal image since they embody regularity and repetition coupled with abrupt changes and discontinuities. In other words, they exhibit self-similarity and simultaneous order and chaos. These images also resemble fractal, strange attractors, since groups of curves present in the machine-generated effects tend to form clusters creating suggestive patterns. Fractal patterns, similar to Henry's machine-generated effects, have been found to exist when plotting volcanic tremors, weather systems. The ECG of heartbeats and the electroencephalographic data of brain activity. Henry found in fractals a means of both classifying his artistic activity and describing the aesthetic appreciation of his visual effects. Among the many artists who have previously employed what are now recognized as fractal images are Vincent van Gogh's dense swirls of energy around objects, the recursive geometries of Maritus Escher, the drip paint, tangled abstractions of Jackson Pollock, art and technology. Some would argue that scientific and technological advances have always influenced art in terms of its inspiration, tools and visual effects. In the words of Douglas Davis, art can no more reject either technology or science than it can the world itself. In his writings Henry himself often expressed his lifelong enthusiasm for fruitful collaborations between art and technology. During the first machine age, prior to World War II, enthusiasm for technological advances was expressed by the machine aesthetic which heralded the modern movement. Affiliated art movements of this time which shared aspects of the machine aesthetic included purism in France, futurism in Italy, suprematism, productivism in Russia, constructivism, precisionism in North America and kinetic sculpture. By the 1960s, in the second machine age, technology provided not only the inspiration for art production but above all its tools, as reflected by the art and technology movement in the United States. Adherents to this movement employed only the very latest available computer equipment. In this early phase of computer art, programmers became artists and artists became programmers to experiment with the computer's creative possibilities. Since Henry worked in comparative artistic and scientific isolation, he did not have access to the latest technological innovations. In contrast to those working, for example, at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, by the 1970s, 
The earlier enthusiasm for technology witnessed in the 60s gave way to the postmodern loss of faith in technology as its destructive effects, both in war and on the environment, became more apparent. Goodman suggests that it is since 1978 that a second generation of computer artists may be recognized, a generation which no longer needs to be electronically knowledgeable or adept because the software does it for them. This is in contrast to Henry who had to acquire the necessary knowledge and skills to manipulate and modify the components of the bombsite computers to construct the drawing machines. During the 1980s, the application in computers of the microchip increased the affordability of a home computer and led to the development of interactive computer graphics programs like Sketchpad and various paintbox systems. During this period, computer art gave way almost completely to computer graphics as the computer's imaging capabilities became exploited both industrially and commercially and moved into entertainment related spheres, e.g., Pixar, Lucas Films. The computer once again became, for some, an undisputed artistic tool in its own right. This renewed enthusiasm in the computer's artistic possibilities has been further reflected by the emergence towards the end of the 20th century. Of various forms of cyber, virtual, or digital art, examples of which include algorithmic art and fractal art. By the 21st century, digitally produced and or manipulated images were exhibited in galleries as veritable works of art in their own right. Conclusions Henry's drawing machines of the 1960s represented a remarkable innovation in the field of art and technology for a variety of reasons. Firstly, the bombsite analog computer provided not only the inspiration but also the main tool for producing highly original visual effects. Secondly, his machine's reliance on a mechanics a chance, as opposed to predetermined computer programs, ensured the unrepeatable and unique quality of his infinitely varied machine-generated effects or mechanical fractals. Thirdly, the spontaneous interactive potential of his drawing machines modus operandi preempted by some 20 years this particular aspect of later computer graphic manipulation software finally henry was never artistically inspired by the graphic potential of the modern digital computer he much preferred the direct interaction afforded by the clearly visible interconnecting mechanical components of the earlier analog computer and as a consequence of his drawing machines also this was in stark contrast to the invisible and indirect workings of the later digital computer. The mechanical analog computer was a work of art in itself, involving a most beautiful arrangement of gears, belts, cams, differentials and so on. It still retained in its working a visual attractiveness which has now vanished in the modern electronic counterpart. I enjoyed seeing the machine work. In view of these considerations, Henry's drawing machines may be said to not only reflect the early experimental phase of computer art and computer graphics but to also provide an important artistic and technological link between two distinct ages of the 20th century. The earlier mechanical, industrial age and the later electronic, digital age.